So next, let's look in more detail at address spaces. So what's an address space? Well, we've got a process, and it has to have access, that is, when the processor is running, the processor needs to access the process's code, the process's stack, the process's global variables, and the process's dynamically allocated memory. Okay. All that is what the process needs to have access to. And really, when I say the process needs to have access to that, what I mean is the processor, as it is executing on behalf of this process, needs to have access to all of this in memory, but nothing else. So if in memory there's process A, and then also process B with its, uh, with its requirements, and the kernel with its requirements, right, its own code, its own stack, uh, its own global variables, and so on. What we want is when process A is running, it only has access here. And that's this idea of we're going to provide the process this constrained environment where it only has read-write access to the memory that contains its information. And it doesn't have read-write access to the memory containing process B's information or the kernel's information. So as process A is running, it is in user mode, it is blocked from reading or writing this code, stack, global variables, dynamic memory, it's blocked from reading or writing this one. In fact, everything is blocked except the pages of memory that are specifically allocated for this process. How are these address spaces implemented? Well, um, there is a part of the processor called the MMU. So this is the memory management unit. Right. And the memory management unit is responsible for all accesses to memory. Let's look at how it could be done, Okay, a simplified version of the memory management unit. So a simplified version would be something like the following. We have our addresses, and then we have a table of permissions. Okay. So rather than having this table for every single address in the address uh, uh, in memory, we're going to go ahead and block it into 4K chunks. So this is the first 4K, the second 4K, and on and on. That'll allow us to have this table be smaller. And then what the table can do is the table can just say, Two bits. Is this readable or is this writable? So this one could, for instance, be read-write. This one could be read. This one could be neither. Neither. Uh, read-write. Uh, so on. And so for process A, this read-write one might be the stack, let's say. This read one might be code. This read one might be global variables. And so on. So what we're just what we are doing is setting up for every single possible piece of memory can you read or write to it. So the processor is going looking and saying, okay, can I read and write to this? This is called a page table. And the key is the page table gets swapped out as we swap processes. So as we move from one process to another, the kernel will go ahead and change this page table, changing what view of the real memory the process has access to. Okay. One key thing to keep in mind is that these read-write bits, well, 
uh, actually tell us whether it's read writable in, while we're in user mode. Okay, the kernel when we're running in kernel mode, it obviously may have to read and write these things uh, no matter what. So we'll, we'll see actually uh, this is more involved in this, but as far as user mode is concerned, we have this page table. It tells us for every page in memory, uh, are we allowed in user mode to read or write this memory? So you can see how this provides the isolation in these separate address spaces. Now it's a little more complicated than that. The MMU actually has more that it can do. We have a table of permissions and mapping. So what we're going to look at is not just addresses in memory, but addresses in our 32-bit virtual space. So this is an address in our 32-bit virtual space. I say virtual because, for instance, we may not have 32 bits of actual uh, RAM. And this is called a virtual address. Okay, so these virtual addresses are the addresses that we're going to be using in our application. So in all the code that's running, we're going to be dealing with virtual addresses. And there's going to be this mapping that happens by the MMU, which is part of the processor, that will convert them into physical addresses that actually go out to the memory bus. Okay. But every address is going to go through this translation. So the instruction pointer is going to be using virtual addresses. The uh, stack pointer is going to be using virtual addresses. Whenever we read and write into memory, it's going to be actually using virtual addresses. And then we have this table, which is still called the page table. But it's wider. It has more per entry. In each one of these page table entries, we have the physical address. And here, then we have our permissions. So what this physical address is going to allow us is some flexibility later by allowing these virtual pages to be located anywhere in real memory. The key, as far as isolation is concerned, though, is these permissions.